Hello everyone. Good morning. Am I audible? <coughs> Perfect. Okay. So let's start with the session, guys. Uh, let's start with the session. Very good. Right. So, in the past few days, you know what are we uh, what are we doing? Okay, from past few days, we have understood what is Java, how is it working like, right? We saw the execution process and we kick-started with something called as what? Conditional statements, right? This was the topic we started probably a couple of days back and we are doing it in the most easiest manner and the easiest manner, right? Okay, conditional statements, clear? Yeah. So what are conditional statements here? they are used to take some decision okay based on certain condition i need to take some decision over here okay out of which we had five types simple if if else if else if and nested if so we saw a lot of uh, programs related to that and i have given you a couple of assignments as well right so in today's session we are going to talk about the last part that is nothing but switch statement okay what is the last part we are going to see here? We are going to talk about something called as switch statement. Whenever we talk about switch statement, it is always used for character comparisons. What is it generally used for? It is generally used for character comparisons. How? How does it work, sir? I will show it to you practically. So always have that thing in your mind. Switch meaning it is always used for what? Character comparisons okay this is all about it but how do we work it in practical part okay how do we see it in practical manner i will try to tell it to you with the help of a syntax and example okay so firstly uh, let me write down the syntax then i will talk about the a couple of examples here okay syntax goes like this I should have switch, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, open curly braces and close curly braces and then followed by I should have cases, case 1, case 2 and I can have n number of cases, okay I can have n number of cases. And optionally, I can also have something called as default. What is the meaning of it? We will understand in some time. Okay, now don't worry. Default and then we can also have something called as break. Okay, we can also have something called as break. And I'm passing the choice. You will never ever understand the syntax phase. Okay, so I know it, you know, I mean, how is the syntax? I know it, but this is how the switch statement works like. But I will try to explain it with the help of a program here so that you will all understand this in a beautiful manner. Okay. Now guys, this is all how it works. Switch, I need to pass the choice. Based on the choices, I need to keep on comparing. And there is something called as break and there is something called as default and there is something called as case. What is the meaning of all the three terminologies here? I am going to explain it with a beautiful example over here. Okay, so now here, uh, let me try to do this data here, guys. I will have a process int choice equals to, I give it as 3. What did you understand? Okay, int choice equals to 3. What did you understand? Sir, there is a variable called as choice and that is storing the value called as 3. And that's a non-decimal numeric value. That's the reason it is int, right? Now here, I will have something called as switch statement. Okay, what am I trying to have? I am trying to have something called as switch statement. Open curly braces and close curly braces. This is the scope of switch statement. Now here, I have to pass the choice. I have to pass the choice here and I have to start comparing with the help of cases. I'll tell case 1 colon I have to give System dot out dot print ln. SOP means system dot out dot print ln. Okay, so so just understand that part. Open parenthesis close 
and I will just give it as in case one. I'll just give the output as in case one. Similarly, I will have case two also. Okay, I'll have what? Case two. Case two, and I will just print the output as system dot out dot print ln, and I will just write it as in case two. <laughs> Okay, so I have a switch block and multiple cases, right? Now I'll also have one more case. Case 3. And I'm going to print system.out.println in case 3. Okay, so I'm just explaining perspective, guys. Okay, nothing much. Okay, nothing great over here. Just for explaining perspective, I'm taking this example. I hope everyone understood line number 1, correct? everyone understood what is happening over here sir 3 is the value that is getting stored into variable choice and the data type is int so when i tell switch of choice i am passing the value called as 3 so when i tell switch of choice i am passing 3 okay now i check is 1 equal to equal to 3 no it is used for character comparison i told right is 1 equal to equal to 3 no is 2 equal to equal to 3 no is 3 equal to equal to 3? Yes, this is true. Therefore, in 3, in case 3, will get executed. Got the clarity here? Similarly, similarly, I will pass, okay, I will pass the choice as 2. Okay, I will pass the choice as 2 here. Okay, let us see what will happen over here. Just a moment. I will pass the choice as two over here so what is the choice i'm passing now i am passing two correct now is one equal to two no then is two equal to equal to two yes so what happens in case two will get executed in case two will get executed got the clarity similarly okay similarly over here i have to keep on comparing for other terminologies as well okay so what i'll do here i'll give the choice as Okay, I will give the choice as, for example, I'll give my choice as 1 now. Okay, I'll give the choice as 1. The switch of choice is 1. Is 1 equal to equal to 1? Yes, this is true. In case 1 will get executed. Got the clarity? So, based on the choice I pass, I have to decide what am I going to execute. So, if it is 1, in case 1. If it is 2, in case 2. If it is 3, in case 3. This is used for comparison purpose. Okay, it is generally used for what? comparison purpose got it right but now the same program let me try to execute it once for you all so that i could tell you the problem statement what are we are what we are facing okay now which is the editor we have to open we can open notepad plus plus right i open notepad plus plus you can either make use of notepad or notepad plus plus initially okay now it is fine so now let me write a program here class in order to write a Java program, the first step is we have to create a class. Class and the class name is, I give it as switch demo. Open curly braces and close curly braces. I have a class and the class name is switch demo. And then where will the execution always begin from? The execution will always begin from our main method. Okay, so how will I execute? Uh, how will I have my main method? public static void main within parenthesis i will have it as string array of arguments open curly braces and close curly braces this is all about it let me save my program first okay let me save my program first okay control s when i tell control s it's asking me udai where do you want to store your java program i tell on the desktop here there's a folder called as Java programs here. So go to that particular folder and store it over there. So class name and file name should be same and then save as you have to search for what? Java source file. Once you search for Java source file, automatically it will take the extension as .java. Okay, automatically it will take. And I have to tell save. Got it, right? Now I will have one variable. Okay, I will have one super duper variable here. Okay, int. I'll have the variable name as choice equals to, okay, I have the choice variable called as choice equals to three. So this everyone would have understood, I believe. Now I should have my switch statement. 
how will I have my switch statement? Switch, open parenthesis close and open curly braces close. This is my switch statement. To the switch statement, switch, open parenthesis close, curly braces open and close. I have to pass the choice. Okay, I have to pass the choice over here. Then how will I compare here? With the help of cases. Case 1, I have to write it as system dot out dot print ln. So I call it as SOP. SOP means system dot out dot print ln and I just give the output as in case 1. In case 1. Okay, that's it. So similarly, how many cases uh, you can have? You can have any number of cases. It doesn't matter at all. But in my particular program here, I'm trying to have only three cases. Okay, you can have any number of cases, guys. Doesn't matter. Okay, so here I'll write it as two. Here I can write it as three. Okay, this is all about my program. This is all about my entire program. Okay, now. So what is the choice I've passed? Three. Switch off, three. Is one equal to three? No. Is 2 equal to 3? No. Is 3 equal to 3? Yes, 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 yes. So therefore, in case 3 should get executed. Clear? Now let us see it practically. But how can we see it practically? I told you one way yesterday. Go to the folder where all your Java programs are stored. Okay? And just go to the URL path here. Okay, just go to the directory here. And you have to just search CMD. So once you search for CMD, what will happen here? Your command prompt will get opened in that respective directory itself. See, it's already opened in desktop and Java programs. It's already opened in that respective directory here. For the clarity, so this is the major reason I make use of the command prompt in a beautiful manner. Okay, so now yeah, okay, this is my command prompt. I need to execute it. So in order to execute it, how will I do it here? Java C compilation switch demo dot Java. I have to compile Java C switch demo dot Java here. Okay, this is how the compilation will happen here. Compilation done successfully. Now I have to interpret it. Okay, for interpreting Java switch demo, I tell enter. So when I tell enter, did I get the output as in case 3? Yes, I got it as case 3. So my program is efficient. So whatever choice I gave, so it's working fine. What if I give my choice as 2? What if I give my choice as 2 here? Okay, now I give my choice as 2 here. So I pass switch off 2. Now, is 1 equal to 2? No. Is 2 equal to 2? Yes. So therefore, my output which I am going to expect it, the expected output is in case 2. But let me see what output will I get when I compile my Java program. Okay, so the above arrow mark, okay, the upper arrow mark, if you click, you'll go to the previous command and the below arrow mark, the previous command. See, my output should have been in case 2, but in case 3 is also getting executed. Okay, there is some problem. Okay, there is some problem. So now when I pass 1, I'm passing the choice as 1. So when I tell switch of 1, is 1 equal to 1? Yes, true. My expected output is in case 1 should get executed and the remaining blocks of cases should get ignored. Okay, actually speaking, it should get ignored, right? But when I execute it, I get a different story only altogether. Okay, see, when I compile it, when I interpret it, can you see the output? In case 1, case 2, case 3, all the three cases are getting executed. My necessity was when I tell 1, in case 1, 2, in case 2, 3, in case 3. But over here, all the cases are getting executed. The reason behind it, okay, the reason behind it is I will go back to my sheet where I was explaining. So now what happens as soon as I give, okay, the input, okay, as soon as I give the input as uh, 1 here, what will happen, you know? So as soon as I give the input as 1, choice is 1, okay? So what happens here is 1 equal to 1. In case 1 will get executed and simultaneously the below cases also will get executed. If I give it as 2, okay, if I give it as 2, choice is 2. Is 1 equal to 2? No. Is 2 equal to 2? Yes. In case 2 will get executed and the remaining cases also will get executed automatically. So there is some small problem. In order to rectify it, that is the reason we make use of something called as, okay, uh, 
break here. Okay, what is the job of break? I will tell you in a most beautiful manner here. Okay, now what I'll do, you know, I will give the choice as two. Okay, I'll give the choice as okay two over here. Just a moment. Now I'll give it as two. Okay, and I'll make use of something called as break. After case two, I'll make use of something called as break. Okay, now now see what will be the output. What is my choice? Two, sir. What is the choice? Is one equal to equal to two? No. Now, is two equal to equal to two? Yes. In case two will get executed, and the problem was the remaining cases also will get executed below that, right? So, but since I have used break over here, the control will directly get transferred outside the block here. So, what is break? Break is a keyword. It is already existing. As soon as you find break, the control is immediately transferred outside the block here. Outside the switch scope here, the control is transferred outside. Got the clarity? So this is what we are supposed to understand when it comes to break here. Okay. Now, now let me execute it once. Okay. Let me execute it once. So what I do? I give the choices to. I give the choices to. What is my ex, uh, expected output in case two? Right, my expected output is in case two. But look at the output what I get. In case two also I'm getting. In case three is also I'm getting. Right. So therefore, in order to make it efficient, I have to just make use of break keyword over here. Which keyword? Break keyword over here. Right. So now when I execute my program, see, choice is two. Is one equal to two? No. Is two equal to two? Yes. In case one will get, in case two will get executed, and since there is break, the control is directly transferred outside the switch block. Okay, the remaining block will not will not get executed. Directly it is transferred outside the switch block here, case block here. Okay, this is all about it. Now when I go back to my program and when I execute it, see what should be the output. Did I get my effective output, efficient output in case two? Yes, my program is working very good. Okay, it's working fine. Now, if I give my input as one, if I give my choice as one, can you tell me what will be the output here? What will be the output here? Think and tell me what will be the output. Any idea? I'll answer to all your questions here once. Okay, don't worry. Okay, so what will be the output, guys? Any idea? What will be the output here? Yes, sir. The choice is one. The choice is one. So when I tell choice here, it's one. Is one equal to one? Yes. In case one will get executed, and the second block, the remaining block also will get executed automatically in case two. But since Break is used in case two. Directly, the control will go outside the switch block. So therefore, the output will be in case one and in case two. Okay. So in case one and sorry, in case one and case two. Got it? But therefore, what am I supposed to do to make it efficient? I have to make use of break. Okay. I have to just make use of break. Very good, guys. Very good. Okay. Now here, is it necessary to use break at the last block here? No, not necessary, sir. Case three is last block, sir. Why will you use break over there? Got it. So choice is one. Okay. Switch off one. Is one equal to one? Yes. In case one is getting executed, break meaning the control is transferred outside. Uh, if I give it as two, if I give it as two, choice is two. Is one equal to two? No. Is two equal to two? Yes. In case two will get executed, and since break is used, the remaining cases won't get executed, and the control is transferred outside the block here. Got it? And if I give it as three, if I give it as three, simple. Is one equal to two? No. Is a three? Sorry, two equal to three? No. Is three equal to three? Yes. In case three will get executed, since there is no remaining blocks, automatically the control will come outside. Got it? Now. What if I give it as 30? What if I give the output? I mean, the choice is 30. So when I tell choice equal to 30, is one equal to 30? No. Is two equal to 30? No. Is three equal to 30? No. None of the cases will get executed. So if none of the cases get executed, then I can make use of something called as default. 
okay what is the job of default here if none of the above cases will get executed automatically okay automatically the i mean the default block will get executed okay so here i'll just give it as invalid okay just give it as invalid so now what will be the output here see when i compile my java program and when i interpret my java program so when i interpret it look at the output what i get here did i get the expected output as invalid yes but now if is it efficient not yet so can you tell me what will be the output see i'm giving it as 3 so now when i execute it okay and when i interpret it look at the output i'm getting when i give the choice as 3 you know the output should be in case 3 but invalid is also getting executed why sir in case 1 you have used break in case 2 you have used break okay in case 3 you have not used break so it will execute in case 3 what are the remaining blocks default invalid also will get executed therefore make it efficient sir make it efficient how by using break here so this is all about the entire process this is how we are supposed to work around with this process here got it this is all about the entire database okay so this is how the basic way of working around with the entire process happens clear got the clarity okay i hope you got the basic idea about okay how do we work around with the data here so there is one question okay uh, i told switch works for character comparison okay but we are making use of integers over here so when i tell character it means uh, a number as well okay in this particular scenario when i tell care you know i mean it's different character meaning it's generally used for characters as well as uh, numbers as well in this particular scenario but i'll give you one more example here wherein you'll get the output here but as of now what will be the output the choice is three one two three three will get executed the output will be in case three so when i execute it see i will definitely get the output as in case three so my output is well efficient right now okay so this is how we are supposed to understand clear so this is one such example guys but now similarly we can do one more way as well okay similarly we can do one more way as well sir what is that one more way sir i will tell you i will tell you okay now i'll go back to my switch statement huh i'll do it over here okay uh see we can also do it for okay validation perspective okay we can also do it for validation perspective how sir imagine if my okay a character comparison also it's possible right if i give the grade as a okay i will just print it as excellent okay i will print it as excellent here if the grade is b okay it means good okay if the grade is b it is good if it is c bad you know i mean he's he's plunking what about apart from this apart from a b c if there is some other character here then I have to give it as invalid grade here, invalid grade, okay? So we have to develop a program for this, okay? If it is A, excellent, B, good, C, bad, okay? So this is for grade validation here. So what I'll do here, same. I'll open my notepad here, notepad++ plus plus here, control N. When I tell control N, a new file will get opened and I have to tell class, class name is, I have to just give it as grade, validation okay open curly braces and close curly braces okay now i should also have my main method wherein the execution will begin from public static void main within parenthesis it is string array of arguments open curly braces and close curly braces now let me save the file okay let me save the file grade validation class name file name and save as java source file you have to scroll and automatically the extension will be taken clear so we have successfully done this entire process here okay great so we have saved that entire program now i will take a variable the variable is char okay variable is char char i'll take the variable name as grade equals to i give it as c grade what is the grade here c grade now here i will tell switch okay 
switch open parenthesis close open curly braces close here got it so now here to the switch here i am passing the grade so the choice is not a predefined variable so whatever variable i consider the same variable i need to pass here okay it's not that we have to always give it as choice here no 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 not like that okay so here i'll start the comparison process how do you compare here cases case if it is a okay if it is a grade what am i supposed to do here i have to print system dot out dot print ln i will just give it as excellent okay excellent okay they got distinction okay excellent this is distinction okay done excellent this is distinction similarly how many grades okay i'll do it for three grades okay not for more than three but three you can use many many you can use any number of cases guys i'm just making use of this data case b and case c so if i give it as this is good this is good and this is nothing but first class good first class c a uh, bad okay uh, fail okay c grade fail <laughs> okay i'll have a very sad emoji here okay now fail great now here what will be the output of my program here as of now what will be the output of my program sir you are passing c sir the grade is c is a equal to c no b equal to c no c equal to c yes 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 in i mean uh, bad fail will get executed see i compile java c grade validation dot java i compile my program here okay so the compilation should happen in a beautiful manner see and i will interpret it as well okay so when i tell this part did i get the output here bad fail yes i got the expected output but now similarly if i give it as b okay if i give it as b over here what will be the output grade is b a equal to b no is b equal to b yes good will get executed since i have not used break the remaining block also will get executed automatically see when i compile it and when i interpret it okay this is how the logic behind it has been written the algorithm or the data structure which we have followed so it will execute the remaining cases as well so it is getting executed in order to make it efficient here what am i supposed to do here so i have to make use of break over here i have to make use of what break so now it's efficient but here if i give it as a grade what will happen a equal to a and b equal to b i mean this will also get executed so i have to make use of break over here so now my program is much efficient here okay if i give it as a a grade okay meaning excellent if i give it as b good if i give it as c bad that's it what if i give it as z what if i give it as z so this will be like sir if you give it as z here there are no cases so therefore i can write something called as default when will default get executed sir when the above cases won't get executed then automatically the default will get executed invalid grade okay that way but now but now in c grade i have to use break why if i give it as c automatically you know what will happen here even default will get executed so we can avoid using break at the last case if i give a only a if i give b only b if i give c only c if i give it as z here what will happen invalid grade will get executed okay invalid grade will get executed see did i get the expected output yes what if i give it a c now can you tell me the output now guys think and tell me what will be the output now i'm expecting answer now guys can you tell me what will be the output think and tell me i'll give you time think and tell me okay majority of you have told it as fail very good very good so now when i compile it okay and when i execute it oh my god we are getting it as invalid grade how why are we getting it as invalid grade guys i knew it you will all give me wrong wrong answers only the reason is because java is case sensitive here i am passing lower case c but here it is getting compared upper case c 
got it. You lost one mark in an interview. You'll be confident. Oh, I gave correct answer. But actually speaking, it's absolutely invalid, right? So you should be very, very, very precise here. Okay. The reason is because this is Java. Okay. Case sensitive. So you have to be very, very precise in answering, you know, minute things you need to observe. This is lowercase c guys. Is a equal to a, b equal to b, is c equal to c? No. Why? Because it's lowercase c. Okay. Therefore, invalid grade only will get executed. But what if you give it as uppercase c? It will work. Okay. It will definitely work. Whatever you told will absolutely work in this particular scenario. Did I get the output? Yes, I got it. But in the previous instance, you gave me wrong answer. Got it. So be, you know, minute things you need to observe. Once you start observing, it becomes very easy. Clear? Now you all understood. Oh yeah, man, I missed one point here. Okay. So this is how we got to learn, you know, that's how we learn things. Okay. You got the clarity here. So whenever we talk about switch here, it is always used for comparison. Okay. And switch is used for comparison and case is responsible and default will get executed when the above cases won't get executed and break. It is used to transfer the control outside the block. Okay. So this is all about switch statement clear. Any confusions with respect to switch guys, anyone having any doubt here, you want me to explain anything, any confusions with respect to switch. Yeah, see, uh, that's what I told you, right? I told you, right? Uh, th there was one question as I told you, I told you character comparison. I answered this question. I hope you, you didn't listen to me. Okay. So I told you in this particular scenario, when I tell character, it means even an integer. Okay. Even an integer here. Okay. So when I talk about this particular data here, okay, I answered this question already. So in this particular scenario, when I tell character, it's nothing but numbers or okay. It can also be a single character in this particular scenario. It doesn't matter. Okay. We can compare both, but we cannot compare decimal numbers and all. Okay. So we cannot compare decimal numbers. It's an integer or we can also compare a single character. Okay. In this particular scenario, when I tell character, if you don't like the word character, you can ignore character. You can just tell it is used for comparison. That's it. Okay. It's very simple way of answering. Okay. Doesn't matter. Okay. So great. Okay. So we have understood something called a switch. Okay. I am done with switch over here. Okay. It is generally used for comparisons here. Okay. Yeah. See strings. Okay. I'll tell you one part here. Even strings are allowed. See, I'll tell you one important part here. Numbers are allowed. Okay. Numbers are definitely allowed. For example, you can compare non decimal numeric values. Okay. Non decimal numeric values. You can compare those here. Okay. And you can also compare, okay. Characters. Okay. You can also compare characters, but decimal values cannot be compared. Okay. Decimal values cannot be compared over here. Okay. Strings can also be compared with respect to the data here. Even strings can also be compared over here. But you cannot compare decimal values. This is what one small problem which we have with respect to strings over here. Okay, I mean uh, switch case over here. Apart from that, rest everything you can compare in a beautiful manner here. Okay, so this is all about the entire data here. Okay, see when I tell numbers in non-decimal, you can compare byte, you can compare short, you can compare int, and you can compare long. Okay, you can compare all of it. Okay, you can compare char also and you can also compare string also, but we cannot compare decimal values. That is float. We cannot compare Boolean. We cannot compare and we cannot compare double. So these are the few things which you should know. So when I tell comparison, byte, short, int, long, char, string, all this are compared, but which is not compared this three float. We cannot compare a Boolean. We cannot compare double. We cannot compare. Okay. So this is the basic way of understanding. Okay. Great. Okay. So we understood this data as well. Okay. Now great. Now we are done with all decision making statements guys. Okay. We are done with simple if, if else, if else, if, you know, nested if as well as switch statement. Okay. Now, now uh, I'll be talking about a small concept again, but before that, you know, 
I gave you one assignment yesterday, right? So what is the assignment here? You have to find the largest of three numbers, correct? Okay? You have to find the largest of what? Three numbers over here. It's a very, very simple program, guys. Trust me here, okay? But it's logical. You'll be understanding, oh, it has such a deep meaning uh, inside. So just understand over here. A value is 5. B value is 3. And C value is 2. When will you conclude that A is largest? When will you conclude that A is largest? A should be greater than B. And A should be greater than C. Correct? A should be greater than B and A should be greater than C. That is when you will conclude that A is largest. Clear? Now, in this particular scenario, 3, 5, 1. Who is largest? B. How did you conclude that B is largest? Sir, B is greater than A and B is greater than C. So, that is when I came to the conclusion that B is largest. Correct? Similarly, 2, 3, 5. Now, who is largest? C, sir. How did you come to the conclusion that C is largest? C is greater than A and C is greater than B. So, it is greater, greater. This is all greater. That's the reason we got this expected output. So, we have to write it with respect to a programmatic way. Okay, that's all about it. See? So, when I write here, I'll create a class here. Class, largest of 3 numbers okay i'll give the class name as only largest of three numbers and i'll have public static void main within a, a lot of them have done it okay so that's the reason i'm going uh, a bit quick here because everyone knows it already but a few of them you know are not aware of it for them i'm trying to do it okay let me save this file okay we have to save it as java source file Yes, I'm done. Okay, now here we have three uh, three characters, three variables. Int a equals to 10. Int b equals to uh, 15. And int c equals to uh, 10 here. Okay, we'll take this as 20 here. Okay, now, so we'll take this way. I'm doing it in a uh, hierarchy way, the high level way, okay? So, when will I tell A is largest? When will I tell A is largest? A should be greater than B and, okay, A should be greater than C. So, when A is greater than B and A is greater than C, it means A is largest. But how do we represent AND in Java here? We make use of double ampersand, okay? This is called as AND here. So, A should be greater than B and A should be greater than C. That is when you will come up with the output as system.out.println. And what will be your output here? We will write it as A is largest. Okay, A is largest. Got it. Understood. Else if. I have one more condition. Else what? If here. What is that if condition over here? If b is greater than a and b is greater than c and what will you be the output here b is largest right so now one common sense here what is the common sense sir you can actually do it in many many ways guys okay you can trust me here you can do this output in many many ways here but i'm trying to do it in the most easiest manner that's it okay so in this particular way what is a b c here 20 15 10 so, if A is greater than B and A is greater than C, A is largest. Okay, if B is greater than A and B is greater than C, B is largest. If A is not largest and B is not largest, automatically C is largest. That is the reason I write it as else block. Okay, this is the basic way of understanding. Okay, but you can reduce the complexity guys. Okay, uh, trust me here. Okay. Any logical question you get in an interview here, you should always have that thing in your mind. What is it? First, you have to get the output. Hook or crook, get the output. Later, try to make it efficient. Okay? It's not that when you try to do it in the efficient manner for the very first time, time consuming. Right? First, get the output. Okay? Hook or crook, get the output. Later, try to keep on modifying. Okay? Later, try to do, oh, what happens if we do it like the that way what happens if we do it this way so you have to keep on experiencing over here okay 
So this is what we are supposed to understand when it comes to okay the data here. Got the clarity here. So see if you want to cross check, you can also print the values of A, B, and C here. Okay, if you want system dot out dot print ln and I have to print the values of A. I can give the value of A uh, plus A plus you have to give B colon plus B plus C colon plus C. Guys, I'm trying to concat us to see A will get printed, A value will get concatenated. B will get printed, B value will get concatenated. C will get printed, C value will get concatenated. Okay. Uh, I'm not trying to do rocket science here. Okay. Nothing great over here. So I'm just trying to print it. See Java C largest of three numbers dot Java. So I'm trying to compile it in a beautiful manner. Yeah. And then Java largest of three numbers. See A is 20, B is 15, C is 10. Who is largest? A is largest. Right. So now if I give it as 150, who is largest? B no. So when I compile it, when I interpreted, did I get the output? A 20, B 150, C 10. Who is largest? B is largest. If I give it as uh, C as 100, who is largest? C only no. <laughs> okay. This is one data. Okay. So this is what we got the output. C is largest. Okay. So this is the basic way of understanding the data here. Okay. Clear everyone here, understood everyone. This is all about it, okay? But you can reduce the complexity again. You can make it much more efficient here, okay? But I'm just trying going around with the high level view, okay? Now, now as I also told you to do it with respect to a uh, nested uh, if here. Nested if is also very, very easy here. Okay, see here guys, there are three students, okay? There are three students, okay? A, B, C. Okay. There was examination here. Okay. I want to check okay, who scored the highest marks. Okay. He scored 99. He scored uh, 97. And he scored 96 here. Got the clarity here. So the first, in order to check who has scored the highest marks here, A will compare with B. Okay. A will get compared with B. So I check if A is greater than B. So if I tell A is greater than B, I come to the conclusion that A is largest and B is smallest. So B is out of the race. Okay, see guys, I have to check who is the largest, who has scored the highest marks between three people, three students. A, B, C, right? I compare first with A and B. So when I compare with A and B, A is scoring 99. And B is scoring 97. So 97 is lesser. So he's gone. So he lost the race. So now the competition is between A and C. Now the competition is between whom? A and C. If A is having the highest marks, then A is the largest and C is gone. Going here. Got the clarity? So who is the largest now? A. Right? Similarly, A has scored 99. Okay. He has scored 98. And he has scored 100. Okay. First, the competition is between A and B. Okay, the competition is between A and B. Who is the largest? A is the largest. B is the smallest. B is out of the race. Now, the competition is between A and C. Now, I check. The competition between A and C is A 99. C is 100. Now, I compare both. Who is largest? 100 is largest. So, B is out of the competition. A is out of the competition. So, who is largest? C. So, you have to start comparing and trying to derive the output here. Got it. So similarly, A, B, C. I score 80, 90, 100. So now, first I compare A and B. Okay, who is largest? B, right? So A is out of the race. Now I compare B and C. Who is largest? C. So B is also out of the race. So who is largest? C. So similarly, each and every time, you keep on comparing it and try to derive it. Okay, the same program, okay, the same program, I can do it with respect to nested if as well. Okay, so how will I do it with respect to nested if? I will tell you with this particular example, how to do it with the help of nested if. Okay, just a moment guys, let me explain beautifully. The reason I'm trying to do so many things, you know, as I told you previously only, I want you all to be logically strong. Once you are logically strong, one advantage is, 
clearing an interview will become very easy second you will have that confident in you okay that oh yes man i can do it i am able to think and i am able to give the solution okay so that is what i wanted from you all okay so now here this is the data first the competition is between whom the competition is between a and b okay the competition is between a and b if a is largest and b is smallest then b is eliminated the competition is between a and c now so therefore i check if a is larger greater than c therefore i have to write the output as this okay the competition is between these two people if not who will get executed who will get executed else law okay else who will get c is largest okay na sir how sir can you explain it sir yeah 100% i can explain it to you okay then later if b is greater than c obviously b is largest and c is largest this is all about it i am done actually speaking okay i am done actually speaking so now let us try to derive it okay see here looking at the program who is largest a right now i check is the competition is between whom a and b a is 20 b is 15 who won a is 20 b is 15 who is having the highest marks a sir so therefore b is eliminated therefore now the control comes inside and the competition is between a and c now b is eliminated guys because a is greater than b therefore b is eliminated so still a is in the race a and c the competition is between a and c if a and c if a is greater than c a is largest if not c is largest because the competition is between only two people correct so this is the example got the clarity now okay i i am done with this now here in this particular scenario okay 150 is a 20 greater than b 150 is 20 greater than 150 no b is having the highest marks and a is having the lowest marks so a is eliminated now the competition else if the competition is between b and c if b is largest b else c got it so this is how you are supposed to think of something and try to give the logical part okay this is all about the entire process now again if i try to compile i'll definitely get the output here okay i'll definitely get the output in the brilliant way see both ways b is largest b is largest you can either do it with the help of nested if or you can either do it with the help of normal for loop and generally speaking we also have only single curly braces here okay you can also have the curly braces on the same line okay it doesn't matter here okay you can have it on the same line as well okay it doesn't matter so you'll be like oh is it necessary to always have in the next line no you can have the curly braces in the same line got the clarity guys so this is how you are supposed to logically analyze here and try to derive a solution here got it so similar kind of programs will be taught to you in programming session okay so i'm planning to start programming here okay anytime soon i'm not sure but i'll update it to you all okay in the group here i'll update to you so when will the programming classes be started so that you can go ahead with this data here okay now so anyone having any questions as of now guys any questions as of now guys any questions as of now very good okay so if you don't understand guys let me know okay do not hesitate okay na so just let me know sir i'm not able to understand can you please explain i can do it n number of times for you okay don't worry or the video is available you can watch it once again so that you will have better understanding okay na this is how it works okay now i'll talk about one more small thing guys okay one more small thing which i wanted to talk about it is the difference between okay sop and sop ln okay so there is a few things which you are supposed to understand so what is that sir you are talking about something new thing here what is it the difference between okay system dot system dot out dot print and system dot out dot print ln okay so there are two method two functions print and print ln print and print ln so you need to understand the data here okay so let me show it to you let me show it to you here what will be the output here i'll have a class class name is demo okay class name is demo 
open curly braces close and i'll have public static void main within parenthesis i will write it as string array of arguments open curly braces and close curly braces let me save that particular file okay let me save that particular file demo uh, and i'll save this as java source file okay done over here see here guys i have something called as system dot out dot print ln okay so let me try to do this way successfully let me have okay then i'll have something called a system dot print okay so what is the job of it i will tell you here i'm trying to print hi hello i'll tell good morning okay and here i'll tell it as bye okay this is the differentiation okay done here i'll tell here okay uh, hi same thing okay i'll tell it as morning okay and i'll tell it as bye okay great so now here what will be the output see i'll compile it java c demo dot java okay and i will also interpret it as well java demo so what will be the output over here what did you understand over here okay it's a very 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 simple program here okay it's a very 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 simple program which you need to understand okay let me do it for you just a moment okay we're just cross checking with this entire data yes we finally got it okay so just observe what is happening okay so whenever i talk about okay whenever i talk about a uh, print ln it means it prints the data and the control is transferred to the new line see print ln meaning it prints hi and the control is transferred to the next line and good morning control is transferred to the next line print by control is transferred to the next line so this is also done but when i tell print it prints and the control you know stays on the same line morning by so always the output i'll get it in the same line so hi print meaning but it will print and the control will remain on the same line okay print ln meaning it will print and the control is transferred to the next line here got the clarity here okay so now let us see a combination of both okay uh, i told you what is multi line comment right so this is multi line comment meaning this lines won't get executed okay this is multi line comment i hope everyone knows it okay which i have told you long back okay now what will be the output of this program okay i'm just trying to print this entire data see hi hi then uh, print i like it as by by plus 10 okay then i'll write it as uh, uh, java java then ln then i'll write it as hi plus plus hello okay then ln i here and finally i will write it as bye yeah great guys okay this is more than sufficient for me okay i'll write it as bye over here okay great okay this is all about my program guys okay now so let us see how is it going to work like okay sir what will be your output like okay see here so first let me try to derive this okay let me try to derive that particular output here okay so what am i <coughs> sorry okay just a moment guys let me explain it okay see let me do it for you over here okay see s o p 10 s o p or uh, 20 s o p ln okay i'll write it as ln 30 s o p or uh, 20 okay that way so now here the first line 10 will get executed so what will happen 10 will get printed since it is s o p the control will remain on the same line okay next line 20 will get printed okay since it is sop again the control will remain on the same line okay 30 30 will get printed 
Since it is ln, after printing 30, the control will get transferred to the new line. And again 20. So 20 will get printed. So when I tell ln, it will print the data and the control is moved to the new line. So when I tell 10, the control remains on the same line. Prints 20, control is on the same line. Prints 30, the control is transferred to the ne next line. If I had ln, 20 will get printed and the control is transferred to the new line. So it will print first and then the control is transferred to the new line. So looking at that, what will be the output of this program? First of all, what will happen here? Hi will get printed. Let me see here. Okay, I'm trying to comment it over here. Okay, so that we can have the output in the easiest manner. Okay, see here, what will be the output? Hi will get printed. After printing hi, since it is ln, the control is transferred to the new line. Correct? And I am printing hi. So again, hi will get printed. Since it is print, the control will remain on the same line. And then next here, by here, I have to give a space and I have to tell by. And plus 10 meaning I am concatenating 10. So 10 will get concatenated. And what is the next line? Java. So Java will get printed. And since it is ln, the control is transferred to the new line. And then I have to print hi space hello so i have to tell hi space hello after printing hi space hello it's print the control is on the same line then again hi will get printed the next line hi and the control is still on the same line then finally by will get printed and the control moves to the new line so if you want to cross check you can execute and then see okay you will get the same old output here did i get the expected output see here guys see a new line, hi. Is this the output what I have got here? Hi, hi space, by 10 Java, hi space, hello, hi, bye. This is all about it. Okay. So when I tell print, it only prints the data. When I tell print ln, it will print and the control is transferred to the new line, next line. Okay. The, it goes to the new line. Okay. So this is all about the entire process about the difference between, okay, print and print ln method. Got the clarity guys? Okay. So this is all about the entire process here. So everyone understood what is print and print ln? Any confusions over here guys? You want me to explain it again? Print and print ln? Any doubts here? Anyone having any doubts? Okay, great, great. Okay. So we, we are done with pretty much done with the session guys. Okay. So we need to start with something called as loopings. Okay. Which I shall be doing it in the next session here. Okay. So I have, uh, you know, a lot of things to complete here, but don't worry. I'll be doing it for you in a sequential manner here. Okay. So we are done with, uh, the basic concepts guys. Okay. So this weekend, you won't have any session. Okay. This weekend here, you won't have any session. So what I want here is for all the 2020 pass outs here, okay, study your academic subjects. Okay, first study your academic subjects plus the concepts which we have covered. Okay, variables, data types, operators and conditional statements. I am done with this concept. So you have to explore once. The reason is because we would have something called as mock interviews. Okay. I will be taking your mock and understand what are the mistakes you do. Are you strong enough or you want to work around with something? Okay. So I'll be explaining about it in each and every manner here. Okay. So over the weekend here. Okay. So try to explore it. Okay. So that you will not have any problems at all. Clear everyone over here. Okay. So yeah. Okay. There's one question. Sir, can you explain the program on gender? Yeah. Great, great, great. Gender meaning yesterday. Uh, that uh, I mean, uh, which I told uh, with using uh, the data here yesterday. Was it that program, Ranjita? Okay. Yeah, got it, got it. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. Okay, see here. Uh, I'll do the program for you. Not a problem. Okay, it's another 5 10 minutes. Okay, we'll be done. Okay. Now, I'll take a class. Okay. Class name is, I can take it as matrimonial. Okay. Or else we'll take it as uh, matrimony portal. Matrimony portal okay now so open curly braces close and we'll have our public static void main open parenthesis close 
and I have to just give it as string array of arguments. Okay. Now, for checking validation purpose, you require two things. In first, you require the gender char gender equals to. We are considering only two as of now. Okay, there can be many genders here, but I'm just telling you two. Okay, M for male, F for female. That's it. Okay, now now I'm taking one more variable called as age. Age is 22. So now let me save that particular program here first. Okay, matrimony dot Java, matrimony, and you have to just select it as Java source file. You'll be done. Okay, save it. Now here, first of all, I need to check if the gender is it equal to equal to male so a few people went wrong over here okay where sir where sir so here you didn't use double equals you use single equals single equals is always for assigning don't forget okay so double equals is for comparison open curly braces close so what did you understand here system dot out dot print ln okay so here i'll just write it as okay gender is male okay gender is male because it's true correct so if gender equal to equal to male so gender is male so now i have to check its his age now if age is it greater than or equal to 21 okay if the age is greater than or 20 to equal 21 here that is when he is able i mean he can get married if not he's that's not the legal age to get married right so therefore i have to just write it as yes you can get married now okay i'll just write it as yes you can get married okay else i'll just write it as okay have patience okay long way ahead okay i'll just write it as have patience got it this is all about it see first there are two characteristics gender and age if the gender is male the control comes inside so gender is male then I evaluate the age. Is age greater than or equal to 21? Yes, yes, you can get married. Else, if the age is not greater than or equal to 21, then have patience. Okay, done, done, done. With a sad face. Okay, no, with a happy face. Okay, happy face. Okay, done, that's it. For female, what am I supposed to do? Else if, I have to write else if. Why? So if it is female, if it is F only, I need to write one more time. So else if gender is female, I have to write it as gender is female and the age should be greater than or equal to 18. Same. 18, yes, you can get married. Else, have patience. Then if it is not male and if it is not female, so you can write it as invalid, invalid choice or something. Okay, system dot out dot print ln. As of now, I'm just writing it as invalid because I'm not creating any other portal. We have to enhance it here. Okay, this is the basic way, but we can improve it. We can improvise it. Okay, but this is the basic way of understanding. Got it. So here, first you'll check the gender. If the gender is male, then you'll check the age. And if it is female, if it is female, again, gender is female, you'll check the part here. Got the clarity now? If and else if. And if it is not, neither male nor female, you will have invalid. That is all about the entire process. So now if you want to execute it, yes, absolutely you can execute it over here. So you will write it as Java C matrimony. Okay. Matrimony portal dot Java compilation done. Oh my God. I didn't add semicolon somewhere. I need to add a semicolon over here. Yes. So when I compile it, now it should work fine. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I've not made any mistake now. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. It's Java. Okay, I've given it as Java C. Oh, sh just a moment. It's not getting erased. Yeah, finally. Did I get gender is male? Yes, you can get married. But if I give it as uh, 20, 18, 19 here, see, when I compile it, Just a moment, guys. It has to get compiled first and then I have to interpret it later. Can you see? Gender is male, but still have patience. He is male, but he's not greater than uh, his age is not greater than equal to 21. The same thing you can do it with F also. If it is female, so is gender equal to male? No. Is gender equal to female? Yes. 
Age is nine, age nineteen. Yeah, she can get married. So that way you can improvise and try to do it. Okay. So got the clarity over here. Okay, this is all about it. Okay. So here there is a question, uh, sir. What are we supposed to do, sir, for weekend over the weekend here? Okay. So I'll tell you here. Okay, for all the students. So I told you for all twenty twenty passouts. Okay, you have to keep in your mind about your academics as well, examination. So you have to study that. and you have to explore the remaining things and remaining 2018 2019 pass out you just study directly here okay you directly study here don't study for academics here you just directly evaluate this here and the remaining things i'll do it for you all okay so this is all about the entire process clear everyone here okay i hope you don't have any questions as of now here if at all you have you can drop me a message clear guys great okay so we shall wind up a session for today and catch up on monday okay so weekend you won't have any session so try to practice it okay so great guys okay so we shall wind up a session for today and catch up on monday okay so thank you all take care bye bye have a happy weekend